Yeah. What's up, people? <clears throat> I know it's been a couple of days. Um, Sunday was a busy day for me, but um, Monday I had a doctor's appointment, but these last, the last few days have just been kind of emotional for me. Um, a couple of my close, a couple of my close friends have had, um, losses in their family in their family or whatever. Um, and it's just... It's just taking, like, not too much out of me, but it's taking away some of my energy. Um, I want you guys to know one thing. I'll never come here with any type of negativity. No will I go on YouTube reporting anyone's personal business, especially anyone else's family business, nor my family business, unless I have the permission to do so, or unless they go on online themselves and want to express it. Or unless they, or unless they DM me and say, you know, I want you to bring this to awareness, this time and third. Um, one thing I do want to bring to awareness that I feel like no one's really discussing. Um, February was Black History Month. Um, I think the world, and I think the loss of Kobe Bryant has made us realize that um, black culture is an urban culture because I feel like when one of us fall, the tears fall over all of our eyes, not just blacks and whites. There were Hispanics who were hysterical about it. I mean, speaking of African Americans in sports, like I'm not even a Kobe Bryant fan. I'm a, like, like you see, like you see this poster here. I'm a Dwayne Wade fan. I used to be a LeBron James fan. I'm a Steve Nash, Glenn Dragos type of guy. I'm a Dwayne Wade type of guy. I was never really a Kobe fan, but his game deserved nothing but respect, and his contribution, contributions to basketball and to young women, to young men and women, including his daughter Gianna, who also passed, is just, you know, that's something you don't ignore, and. We didn't ignore black history, and for March, we shouldn't ignore women's history. We really shouldn't. Um, men and women's basketball is going into playoffs. So I'm gonna be doing my best. So I'm doing, gonna be doing my best to cover um, lineups in both of those sports. Um, but. Another, let's, going off of black history though, I find it kind of funny how, you know, postpartum to, postpartum to what I think was one of the most emotional and one of the most captivating black history months that we've had in a minute. On March 2nd, um, Spike Lee was confronted at Madison Square Garden and he claims he was unfairly spoken to in a way and he said you know it rubbed me the wrong way and I don't want to be that another Knicks game this season. Stephen A. Smith on first take himself um piggybacked it and said you know I don't even want to go to another Knicks game ever again until Dolan is gone and James Dolan has been such a problem but particularly for black for, for particularly for former black athletes in the New York Knicks franchise um <clears throat> We've seen it with Charles Oakley, and now we've seen it with Spike Lee. And not just for Knicks players, but for not even just African Americans, for anyone who just like anyone in the Knicks organization or who have ever been in the Knicks organization, period. I think they should all um, take a listening ear 
as to what's going on and how James Dolan is responding to it. He's responding to um, many of the many of these issues that he has created. Because and, and I don't mean to bring my life into it, but because it's been so long, um Let's just let's just let's just remind ourselves the last New York Knicks finals appearance was 1999. 1999 was the last New York Knicks finals appearance. That was June of that month. I was born July 1st, 1999. I literally, my mom was literally pregnant when the last time the Knicks were in the finals, <clears throat> and they couldn't win a single game against the San Antonio Spurs. And and in that full season, they did beat the Miami Heat. They did come up from eighth seed and rose above the entire rest of the Eastern Conference. Um, since then, we haven't seen the we haven't seen the NBA Finals. I don't even think there's been an Eastern Conference Finals since then. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the but when it comes to the Knicks, it's been more about money than winning. And this decision, <clears throat> but this decision to just um, remove Charles Oakley and confront with Spike Lee, you know, it doesn't promote money or winning, nor winning. Because Spike Lee has spent more money on Knicks tickets than anybody in the city. He spent more money on the Knicks. Then certain players could even remember spending money going, spending money just being there. Like, and Spike Lee being an Academy Academy Award winner, an Oscar Award, Emmy Award winning director and producer. You know, this isn't just a person you remove. I mean, I don't think anyone should be denied access to a place they've been. And I think if there's a rule change to where there's a certain way they can't get in or if there's a certain way you shouldn't do things, I think if you're a season ticket holder, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're a season ticket holder at any venue, Madison Square Garden, Barclay Center, et cetera, et cetera, you attach your phone number and email address for contact information. And this, now what I'm saying is in this case, that contact information could have been used to say, well, you know what? Let me give Spike Lee a call and just let him know that, you know, something's going on. No. And this leads him to believe that the Knicks literally decided that right then and there just to harass him or just to give him a reason. Just to give him a reason to not want to come around, I guess. My message is be careful who you push away. And this is what's got me so emotional. Like, be careful who you push away because they might not ever come back to you when you want them, when you need them, when they need you even. Be careful who you push away. Especially if that person has been there for you. Been there to support your business. And... We always talk about supporting black. You always talk about supporting black-owned businesses. I'm pretty sure Spike Lee supports some black-owned businesses, but the New York Knicks organization. This is a business. Is a business. Let, let's be honest. Um, James Dolan doesn't treat it anything more, more than that. Um, essentially, be careful who you push away from your business. Be very, very careful. Because Spike Lee is not just any person. And he hasn't even... And it's funny because I could see if... He could be loud on the um, stage sometimes, but he's never put his hands on anyone violently. Um, I've never heard of reports of him disrespecting any staff members in, that state, in, that, in the garden at all. You know... I feel like this was just a selective, I feel like this was just a selective act. 
very, very selective act. Is it James Dolan? Of course. He just, there's nothing, he just wants the money, honestly. And it's so, it's not even, it's not even just that honest, like, it's so obvious. You can't even, you can't even lie to someone to tell James Dolan that he cares about something more than money when it comes to owning the Knicks. That's literally all he's doing. In the last 20, the last 20 years, I mean, he's getting rich, he's getting richer and richer and richer. And as long as that happens, it doesn't even matter to him. Oh, this is a form. Oh, you know, he's a former Knicks player, or he's a, to, to him a customer is a customer. And in that case, you treat all your customers the same, and you let the Hall of Famers in that come in. You let the Hall of Famers and the and the longtime supporters, guys who have been there before, you've been there. I think I think you kind of have a responsibility as the owner to let them know. Or if not, you have a general, you have a general manager, you have a staff, you have a human resources, you have representatives, you have people who can come to him, come to these people, who can go to these people in their emails and contact them and let them know what the deal is. But I feel like James Dolan just wanted to do it mafia style, like. This guy just thinks he's so big and bad. And it's unfair. It's completely unfair. It's unfair the way Spike Lee is treated. Unfair the way Charles Oakley was treated. It's completely unfair. And Charles Oakley said it himself. It's a plantation down there. I can't disagree. I can't even really say he's. I can't even really say he's exaggerating. I, I'm fine. I'm trying to find room to disagree with disagree, disagree with Oakley's statement. I, I don't. I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't got the room to disagree with. Now another topic. There's been a lot. There's been a lot being said. About about Tom Brady, um, recent news that Tom Brady and 49ers are interested in making a deal. And one of my videos, and one of my videos, I was basically talking about like top 10 things you learned at the Super Bowl 54 and whatnot. Pretty much, I touched on how the Patriots are gonna regret losing the losing the raffle or whatever. I'll tell you this much: the Patriots are a do-your-job organization, and if they really are who they say they are, which they've already lied to us about plenty of times through all these years, but. If they really are who they say they are, they are probably going to keep Tom Brady at all costs. Now, if they want to come out and say, you know what, which they, which is, they're not responsible to do this, but I just think, you know, after all these years of swindling the whole entire league to benefit this one guy, um, I think. I think top, I think the Patriots owe Brady something and Brady owes the Patriots something. Brady owes the Patriots loyalty in my eyes. Because they've shown them nothing short of it. They've gotten rid of players for him. They've switched the game. They've, they've partnered with Roger Goodell to switch the rules around for him. Um, there's just been so many things in and outside the scenes, on and off the field, that have been done for this man by the New England Patriots. They've kept secrets. Even at one point, touching on the Aaron Hernandez situation, the rest of the to Aaron Hernandez who committed suicide in prison not too long ago. The Patriots, knowing Aaron Hernandez's history and knowing the type of guy he is, they saw 
he was a great receiver. They saw he was a guy who could help Tom Brady win championships. They looked over at Tom, and they saw that he needed that receiver. And so the Patriots just said, to hell with it. To hell with it, Aaron Hernandez is a Patriot. Like, you guys have gone, undergone so much scrutiny. They've gone to, I feel like they've gone to hell and back for Tom Brady. It had to be Tom Brady, but it had to be really much to talk about before then. Before 2000, the New England Patriots were not much to talk about outside of Drew Bledsoe and a couple of other guys. We're talking about a team who lost to, we're talking about a team QB-wise who lost to Jim McMahon and Brett Favre. And Brett Favre was supposed to be this huge, big, total big screw-up. But everyone likes to forget who he beat in that one, for that one ring he has. And not for the New England Patriots, Brett Favre retires without a ring. If not for the Patriots, Mike Ditka doesn't win that championship in 85. I mean, he does not get another team. And once drafting Tom, once acquiring Tom Brady, everyone likes to say, oh, he shouldn't have been <clears throat> the very last pick in the draft in 2000. It's tw it was 20 years ago. You think any of those quarterbacks, no one thought any of those quarterbacks were going to play 20 years. Are we, like, let's really be realistic with ourselves. Like, you go back to the quarterbacks who were taken before, you back, go back to the quarterbacks who were taken before Tom Brady. And, of course, some of these guys weren't impressing in the NFL, but in college, they showed that they were on that level. You know who else was in college who showed he was so he was very impressive. So he was very impressive. The Darby Manziel. You know who else? Baker Mason. You know who else? Hmm. I can name a bunch of other guys who, let me think, at the NFL level, just couldn't handle it. Like, jeez. You had Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington wasn't a bad quarterback. Chad Pennington was not a bad quarterback. Chad Pennington was great. He just couldn't, he just didn't, he didn't win a ring. Giovanni Carmazzi, Chris Redman, Mark Burglar, Spurgeon, Spurgeon Wynn. They might not have all been all that impressive in the NFL, but in college, yeah. And remember, Brady had, remember, half of the rings Brady has is because of why. First, the fucking tuck rule, that damn tuck rule. And then, and then against the Rams and the Panthers. Who came to save his ass? Adam Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri always came with the game winning two. Everyone says, and then everyone says, Tom Brady had to get the field goal range, didn't he? Yeah. This is the way kicks work. And we learned this from the Buffalo Bills. When you miss kicks, it's not too many games you're going to win. When you're down by one or two points and you need a kick, you need to make that kick. Regardless of how you got the field goal range, when you got when you were getting the field goal range, you were still down two points in that situation. You need the kick, which is worth three points to be to win by just one. Um, and I know the Bills wish they had as an interior, <laughs> honestly, but that organization has done so much for me. And. I, mean, I feel like it's kind of unfair for him to leave because they've given their they've given their everything they've, they've given their everything. I don't mean to make it personal, but so many other but so many other teams out there could have had Super Bowls right now. And yes, I feel for them because, and yes, I feel for them for the simple fact that Roger Goodell said it himself. Tom Brady is the king, and that's what we're going to sell to our fans, da 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 And the NFL was making a CBA already to make the season longer. So, I just feel like it's not going to be one point in this man's career 
where he's gonna have to where he's gonna have to bend his back. So any reason. Everything is just gonna be all about him. Even though even though in the NFL it's supposed to be the CBA is supposed to help everybody, it's not it's not really gonna it's not really gonna help too many times. Help too many times. Point blank period, if Tom Brady leaves the Patriots, no matter what other team he goes to, I'm gonna pretty much see him as gutless. Reason why I understand sometimes you have to move I understand sometimes you have to move on. But not after all of this. Not not after all of this. Not after too many other teams out there were screwed over. Not after what happened to the Steelers with the Titan catch. Not after what happened to the Jets with their Titan catch. Not after not after Rob McCow your teammate Rob Mikowski delivered an elite so many illegal hits on players so many times that he never that he never really got the fucking suspension for. He got one he got a one game suspension. A one game suspension. Every other time he was just fucked. So your teammates are losing money and this franchise is Risking money, risking money is all to keep you on the team. Yeah, Tom Brady has a right. To, yeah, Tom Brady has a right to leave. But how right would it be? It's my question. How right would it? How right would it be? And honestly, if he does leave, um, then I'm going to completely understand how Eli Manning has the balls to beat Brady twice. I'm going to completely understand how Eli Manning had it in him to beat the greatest quarterback of all time twice in the Super Bowl. It's not just going to be because of the defense. It's not just going to be because of oh, the running game, da, da, da. No. Eli has heart. Peyton has heart. I feel like as grown men, they're going to come out and express themselves whenever they feel it's needed. Not all, not necessarily only when the public needs them to. But the way they think, they don't really, they don't advocate for their teammates too much because they understand how the league is. And their teammates understood how to advocate for themselves as well. And I just feel like everything's been, I just feel like everything's been done in the NFL. Not even just in the Patriots, the entire league for this man to always have the benefit of the doubt, to always have the soft end of the stick. I don't know. I think Tom Brady should just retire. Honestly, I think he should retire. Why? Because as fans, we've had enough of the lies. We've had enough. We've had enough of the scrutiny. We've had enough of the bullshit. Honestly, that this league was so much better without the name Tom Brady in it. Be honest, what really, what really got better since Brady got in the league? Quarterback, it got easier for quarterbacks. That's it. One position out of the other 20 or t out of the other 20 positions on the starting football team. That, that's what you fixed. Four percent of the league, the, 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 the league got easier for three or four percent of the players in it. That's that's all that really got better. The Super Bowl performances got worse. Which doesn't really relate to it, but just saying. But 
the quality of the game got worse. The officiating got worse. Everything got so damn critical when this man stepped through. And you know why? Because the whole purpose this whole entire time was to benefit you. I mean, the Patriots kissed your ass from day one to present day, even now. And if I was him, I wouldn't leave the team. I wouldn't leave the team. But because for all this, they could have been got. They could have been got rid of him and been looked for another quarterback. And but but honestly, New England didn't want to give up another quarterback because no one else was going to play teachers pet that well. That's the Tom Brady the teachers pet beef. Like I don't even mean to use explicit language, but it just it just bothers me this much. And I really tried not to talk about it this way. And maybe I should shut up about it. But no, no, I'm not going to shut up about it because. Look, the NFL was better without Brady. Now we're going to see how good it is without him for good. And honestly, if he wants to be on Rob Gronkowski or Jimmy or Jason Witten type of timing and he wants to try to come back, ah, I don't know. The whole league has been shifted for this one man. There is a new CBA agreement to expand the postseason. And I, and I feel like the NFL, after seeing a black quarterback win the Super Bowl, and after seeing, and after seeing multiple black quarterbacks get further in the postseason than Tom Brady, want to make it harder for the typical player, typical quarterback, or just want to make it harder for any team to to win the Super Bowl. And enough is enough. I'm sick of the bullshit. Enough is enough. If Tom Brady doesn't retire, then he better stay in New England. Because New England has benefited him all this. New England has benefited him all this time. He shouldn't go run into another team now that he doesn't have a playoff win. The bed was made. The bed was made for you. The bags was brought to your room. Now sleep and eat and shit in your goddamn room. That's all. The, that's all. The, that's all I ask. This is ISCB Henson signing off. There's gonna be more videos coming up. And um, hopefully, I won't have to get into this type of tone, of tone, language, or tone of voice again for the rest of the day. I apologize to anyone who I've offended. I'm signing off.